Hey everyone, it's Alan over at Cobblers Plus, and today we're going to be working on a Christian Louboutin that got a little damage from a little puppy there. So come join us and check out what we're going to be doing on him. So we're going to be doing new soles and fixing that wrap there. So check it out. <laughs> So again, thank you for joining us. And like I said, we're going to be working on these, replacing that heel wrap right here. And just on the, on the right foot, the left foot is perfectly fine there, but we'll still replace the dowel pin heel on it regardless so they match up. And um, doing the red bottom Caselli mirror protective soles on these. So for now, I'm going to move all this out of the way. Put the shoe up here so it's all out of the way because first things first we have to work on the heel base to make sure that we get that all taken care of and uh, get it going. So um, typically, obviously these are all just glued on. The leather soles, the heel wrap, it's all glued on. And so we're gonna need to remove at least the first thing, a portion of the sole because we're not trying to replace this entire sole, which we can, but it does get significantly more costly and we're just trying to fix this up to be you know usable and presentable again so we're going to be saving this red area here but we need to be able to pull it back so i have to use some heat to deactivate it because using any form of solvents actually it should even come up just now that might rip the leather so we'll use some heat to deactivate it but usually we'll use solvents a lot of times to deactivate it but we don't want to do that just because it'll damage that red there we'll still have to touch it up regardless uh, especially because there's an entire little chunk here missing that we'll have to kind of splice in a new piece and everything right on the back end there but we'll be uh doing all that so uh, actually before i do that let's get this dowel pin out so this is the pin here from the ladies dowel pin heels so we gotta make sure we get this out of the way first There we go. Voila. There's your dowel pin. Usually that has that little rubber cap over top of it, but get that out of the way now. And so I'm just gonna basically fast forward through the majority of it where I'm heating this section up and peeling it off quickly. And then once it's all ready for the next step, I'll uh, stop the fast forward section of it. So let me grab everything together and just start fast forwarding. All right, so a little disclaimer that I have to say at this point, because I know there's a lot of hobbyists out there, don't try this at home because we just heated this up uh, to deactivate the adhesive and that is a heat gun that I'm using. So it's a lot more powerful and if not done properly, it could actually damage the um, plastic covering here on the patent leather, which you gotta keep in mind that patent leather is basically leather, whether it's real leather or fake leather, you can't tell necessarily 100% until you actually remove the plastic, but there's a plastic film over top of it. Some companies apply it as a coating that sticks directly to the leather or whatever it is. And then some companies actually use a version of like shrink wrap almost. They put it over top. There's a bonding process where they use uh, either chemicals or adhesives and things like that. But um, that's actually what patent leather really is. So technically, if we say that a section up here is damaged from the patent leather, there's not much that could be done. We could try the best we can to do fillers, but it's never perfect. So just bear that in mind, even Louboutin, for example, if you were to say ship this back to them and say, hey, we need the, this part fixed or this part fixed, they're not gonna fix it. Heel blocks, however, in most cases like this or the red bottom protective soles, 
they refer shops like us and everything anyways so at this point i need to pull up that insole because we need to get access to the screws underneath this insole here Some of these older models, because I think this is an older one, especially from the look of it, they've got nails on it. Yeah, this one's got a couple of nails and a couple of screws. Or one screw. Take off some of this foam here. But. You can see there, there's one, two, three, four, five nails, and right here in the center is actually a little screw. And I get something a little sharp to make sure that it's, see what kind of head it is for sure. Okay, so we should be good there. All right, so grab my drill. screw out and just in case for anything uh, keep all the parts and everything in this little area here oh, this one to stick again now as far as removing the nails that's kind of a challenge usually so I'm gonna have to get my uh, nail remover a little bit and start prying them up basically and some additional tools so let me go ahead and grab those together all right so I've got my tools together so this is a uh, tack puller nail puller right there got a few other ones here just got my little awl just in case if i need to be able to get around that some additional plier needle noses it's a handful of things because you never know what might happen so i'm going to go ahead and start messing with this thing and it that's quite literally what it is is sitting here digging it out now one of the options i can do is start prying it off and everything but i want to see first how everything's sitting in here um, because what happens is this heel block here is plastic underneath and the nails are threaded nails so they have little like jagged edges on them that grip very well and they tend to grip into the plastic much better what happens is if i start pulling off this heel base it can rip those nails through and we don't want to do that um, plus especially if there's like a shank around there which there usually is sorry i got interrupted there and lost track of what i was saying but um yeah, so we just don't want to strain anything as far as like the shank or any of the other parts of the shoe. So we're going to do what we can as far as seeing if we can remove those nails first on there and then take it from there. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of fast forward it because it's literally just messing around with it for, for a little while and getting this out. So let's go ahead and get started on that fast forward. Enjoy and relax. All right, so now that the screw's out and everything, um, I've got additional tools here to remove the nails. However, these nails are very much embedded in there. Uh, they use a machine that really pushes them down in there. So what I have to do first is kind of wiggle and pry and go back and forth. And we have to start with the heel base. Let me get my, let me readjust the angle because I've got to bring around this guy here. The, or I guess it's in view, right? Change out the foot last. And it's just literally going back and forth and back and forth. So it's probably something that I'll have to kind of just fast forward. I'll go ahead and readjust the angle for you guys a little bit. And uh, yeah, just uh, sit back, sit back and enjoy, I guess, the fast forward motion. All right, so looks like it actually 
they wave fairly easily on this one um, without the nails even even budging at all basically they're still inside the shoe here I don't know if you can kind of see that but yeah got this heel base off so next step we're gonna go ahead and pull up that insole and get those nails out of there because one that could be dangerous and two we don't want to cause any potential harm in case uh, this shoe ends up you know going up against something else. I got this crepe piece here that I'm going to insert there, but I do need to adjust the width on it a little bit. It's kind of kind of narrow for the, or too wide for this shoe. So let me go sand that down a little bit, make sure that it fits in there nicely. Okay, there we go. Now it fits in here. So let's put this back over the heel last. Get all these other tools out of the way real quick. And then Got them down just a little bit, but it might be safer to clip them and then use a punch, which somebody stole my punch. Somebody's always stealing something from my table. Let me go locate that punch before I do the next step. All right, found it. It's uh, this guy here. I usually keep it in here, but then I started keeping it up on the table on the workbench since I use it more frequently. And uh, yeah, somebody keeps taking it all the time. We'll go ahead and clip these nails. Probably, because sometimes if you just hammer straight onto the nails and everything, it goes down pretty easily. But these ones are a little more in there. Oh, that chunk just went shooting somewhere. Thankfully, I'm just here by myself at the moment, so don't have to yell fire in the hole or anything like that. But okay. Now, grab this nail, or the punch all. Man, those things are really in there until they pop right out. That one came out a little more easily. It's one thing that a number of cobblers I've noticed that if they do fast, quick, cheap turnaround, they actually skip through this part here. They just sand down or cut the nails. Come on. Of course, the last one is being stubborn. Okay, hope that punched it through enough. All right, you can see all those nails now sticking out all over the place here. So, I could just grab them with the plier like that. And get rid of them. But yeah, like I was saying, it's one of those things that I've noticed some cobblers actually leave them in. And it's it's not a good thing, but the other thing is that in reality, in the, in the end, they actually make more work for themselves. Because you got to get some nails back in there because this is being held in by just one screw. If you have only one screw, uh, there's a higher probability that the heel could end up some at some point slightly twisting. This was the one that was giving me some problems. Let's see if I can use the pry on that just a little bit. But basically you're going to have to make more holes or drill through it and it's not a good thing. So there we go. Got all those out and everything. Now we can set this shoe aside, close off the insole and hang it up here for now out of the way now i can go ahead and clean up my little area here just a little bit and start working on taking this guy apart oh yeah let me go ahead oh man this thing's peeling right off 
So one thing that I've noticed that some of these factory glues, and it doesn't matter which factory it is, some of these glues, they just don't hold up all that well. They start peeling up very easily, and it seems like this is the case. And this happens a lot actually from aging. Certain adhesives have a chemical reaction happen with the aging, and it seems like the adhesive that's used on the manufacturing level does that very frequently. Um, the adhesive that us cobblers tend to use, it doesn't seem like it does it as badly. It doesn't have that kind of chemical reaction with age. So definitely, definitely a little bit different there, being able to use our adhesive versus whatever the factory stuff is. And I'm not saying it's bad, it just has like this weird chemical reaction, but as you can see, I'm not even applying any kind of solvents or heat or anything to this and just peeled right off. So, yeah, that's that adhesive there, and it's still fairly sticky, like watch, I'll show you guys, see, it's hanging off my finger, it's like a magic trick. Come on, let's see, alright, got it off. But that gives you an idea, chemical reaction occurs. It becomes sticky, but it doesn't hold a bond. There's a difference between stickiness and a bond. Bond actually means it's stuck together or sticky. It just, everything sticks to it or it sticks to everything. So I'm going to put this back in the box for the moment with the screw. And then, because today's the end of the day already, I'm going to go ahead and get this lined up real quick. Where is that leather piece? There it is. Okay. Get a rough sketch out of everything. Now we always make these a little bit bigger because it's always easier to cut off any extra later on. But to at least get things kind of going. Ooh. I have to clean up that leather a little bit after this so much gunk and everything being left behind. Okay. All right, I have to move it up just a hair. So I'm trying to get the rough pattern traced out on this thing. Again, we're gonna have to go a little bit bigger because this leather is already broken in and stretched out and everything where it needs to be. I'm trying to kind of restretch it again. This is gonna almost be redundant, but at least it takes off some of the excess leather over here. And then I'll be able to cut that out a little bit and uh, get ready to form that butt before I end up doing that. What I'm going to end up doing tomorrow morning when I come back in is cleaning this up and then kind of cleaning up this a little bit because there's a little bit of gunk stuck to it after the old one and we don't want to leave that behind. Leaving adhesives behind and whatever other gunk, even if there's no gunk on here, for example, and it's just the adhesive, the problem is it has a chemical reaction actually reoccur with our adhesive and almost counters our adhesive. So it's uh, that's one of the downsides when people come in sometimes asking, uh, can't you just glue it? No, 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 no. It, the old glue, the old factory glue has to be removed. Otherwise, one, you've got layers of glue on top of each other, and basically these different glues are trying to glue to each other instead of gluing the material and bonding it all together. So that doesn't work. And then the other thing is, again, chemical reactions occur with this, and I've seen it too many times where it just doesn't allow the adhesive to properly dry and bond. I mean, it takes a lot longer for it to cure and dry, and then afterwards it has that chemical reaction, which which, which sucks. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, set this one aside, and then hopefully maybe if, if it's open like this, maybe it'll actually dry overnight. That way when it comes to using a steel brush on one of our machines, this will actually clean off a lot nicer um, than that is right now sticky right now at this moment. So we'll just see you tomorrow then. All right, everyone, so we're back here again. Now we're gonna go ahead and use our steel brush here and uh, clean this up a little bit. We may have to touch it up afterwards on one of our sanders just ever so slightly, but this will at least take off the bulk of this nasty sticky glue. So let's go ahead and get started.
All right, so we've got majority of this all cleaned up now. Now we're gonna do some final touches on one of our sanders and then also clean it up by hand just a little bit more. But this took off the bulk of that nasty glue. Uh, this area here, we're gonna leave that because that's actually part of that molding. So if we wanna make sure that it all positions properly, we gotta make sure we leave that little chunk here. I'll still sand it up just ever so slightly, but beforehand, I gotta make sure I fill in all these holes and then we'll go back and, and touch it up here and uh, on the sander. So let me go ahead and get these guys filled up and I'll let you check that out and see what it looks like. All right, everyone, so I've got this one cleaned up a little bit better. I did already beforehand use a little bit of filler right there. There are a few little divots here and there. Make sure that they're, that they're filled in. I mean, it'd be hidden under the wrap, but I'd know that the divots are there. And I don't, I don't want it there. So make sure to fill that in. But this is what we do to fill in. We've got this really fine dust that comes out of our machines that we sand. And so it's extremely fine powder basically. And it has a chemical reaction with this here. It's like a super glue type adhesive. And so we use this to fill in the holes just a little bit. We're not doing too much. Okay, grab my tool, push it down in there. So we do still want at least a portion of the hole left behind so it acts as a um, pilot hole for the screws and the nail or the screw and nails to be able to sit inside of. Okay, Let's see you do the five nail holes just a little bit too. And now I can't see where the holes are, obviously, under all this powder here, or dust. It's all about the feel and remembering where they were roughly. There we go. I think somebody's got some crazy bass outside. Okay, there we go. So all that's filled in now, at least a little bit. Obviously it's not completely filled in. Again, we still want to leave it behind just enough for the pilot holes to work their magic. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and um, go through and do the same thing. It looks like I'm not gonna need the sander after I already cleaned this up with uh, some, some solvent here, cleaned off the glue. So it's much, much better now. So I'm just gonna go through on the steel brush again Clean that up just a little bit more, clean up this, make sure it's all evened out, and then we'll start applying glue. I did put the first coat of glue on the leather. That first coat is gonna soak in a little bit better and work as a primer for us. And so when we start gluing this up, we'll put a second coat onto the leather itself. By the way, I did cut it out. This is a rough cutout, obviously. Um, we want it to overlap in some areas and then we'll cut it when, when the time comes. But for now, go ahead and glue everything up and when we're ready to stick it together, I'll let you check that out. All right, so I just heated this up. I may have to heat it up some more because I'm just using the heat gun on this one. But uh, grab that real quick. Can get just a little noisy. off in a second it's got a cooling down feature so now at this point I just lay it out where I need to and I'm using a piece of paper underneath because obviously this board here is got glue on there and once we start applying a little bit of heat it's gonna transfer over and stuff and all that great stuff that we don't want to happen to these Okay, and so especially while it's warm still, I gotta make sure I'm trying to stretch everything over. 
Got to do it kind of quick. Okay. It's kind of a tight thing to do, but stretch over. couple of cuts right at the bendable areas here that we're going to have to do just to release it somewhat. Yeah, I think it's really on. Sorry for the noise, it's really on there. But and this is why these little scissors of mine, they keep, there it goes, keep getting so worn out is because I grab them and start cutting, which I probably should grab my other scissors. Gotta do that quickly, so give me just just a sec. I really need to figure out a way to be able to have my scissors up here, because it's ridiculous. I keep having to open up the drawers. As much as I like this table, Big Bertha, some days I'm not happy because I gotta open up the drawer and dig through it. It was a great concept in the beginning, but it's starting to lose its appeal a little bit, considering the fact that I keep having to open the drawer all the time easier just to grab some things that's why sometimes you'll see a bunch of tools all over the place so let's see do this here and we're gonna have to heat it up again afterwards kind of help even things out because during this period here there's a few spots where they just kind of need to be stretched over and stuff we gotta grab this guy here. I like using this one because it's a little rounded, so. Okay. Right. It's a matter of just massaging it out, in other words. And this vinyl uh, mallet here kind of makes it a little bit easier to do, so. That's why we put these little cuts right here. So it kind of folds it better. Check if I was even recording. All right, do the same thing on this side. They did the same thing from the factory where they did these little slits here. But, um, you know, considering everything, they were, they were all just shredded up already and everything. Now a lot of times when a shoe has no wrap, in other words, well, the wrap goes all the way around, including the inside. You gotta be a lot more precise. Where with this one, 
it's not something that you have to be as precise with just because this back end as long as there's enough material to get glued down by the sole you'll be fine too much material is a bad thing and um, technically too little as well but and this is why we have to end up reheating it as well So I'll have to reheat it one more time and then just kind of massage it all and everything and work work everything out back into position all nicely. And then this guy here, I'll go ahead and go like this there. Lay it all out, lay it all out. Except it doesn't want to stick because it's starting to get worn out. Okay, there we go. So like little pieces like that will end up getting cut off a little bit better. And these areas here, just get folded inward like that. And they'll lay much better, especially once it gets reheated. But what I was talking about, that it's gonna get cut out, right here, this little snippet there, it's gonna get cut out, there we go because the leather sole is gonna come across that area and cover it up. So this kind of gives you an idea of what it's gonna be like. This little spot here is gonna get cut because that's too much of a fold there. And so we definitely have to make sure we cut out a small portion of it. Otherwise it's gonna lay a little bit funny. But once we apply a little more heat to it, It'll lay out nice. There we go. So that gives you an idea of what it's going to be like there on this side. And so right there. So basically this side of the of the heel blade. Uh, can't talk at all. This side of the heel base right here is basically done right now. So it's actually fairly, fairly smoothened out. I'll probably just smooth it out just a little more with some heat. And then this area here, some heat as well. And then I I'll press it down and it'll stick a lot better. So basically that's what I'm going to have to do where this one on this side is still being a work in progress because I'll have to massage it out, apply some heat and make sure that it all stretches over beautifully and then lay this side flat down. But the adhesive is starting to lose its tackiness and we really want the tackiness. So that's why we heat it up also. It helps uh, bring back that tackiness at least temporarily to be able to lay everything out nicely. So let me go ahead and do that for a little while on this one and uh and then i'm gonna let it cure overnight and then tomorrow i'll be able to come in and continue on with these so let me finish this out it's almost like i'm holding a little flower it's a little lopsided flower though right but let me finish this out let it cure overnight and we'll see you back here tomorrow all for you a few seconds for me tomorrow all right everyone so i sanded out this a little bit on the inside just to rough it up so that here's a little bit better and uh this area just just a little bit while i can get access to it that way it's a little thinned out otherwise all the leather folded up was just too much so now we're over at our press here i've got this uh, little attachment that's going to go over top of the heel and then press everything out around the edges giving it equal distribution for the first bit we're just gonna adhere it just so everything's held in place nicely if i can pull up the insole there this thing can also run nails in but for these we're not going to run the nails in using the heel wheel we're going to actually do that most likely by hand but i just get a little bit of glue all around here Alright, in order not to damage the leather sole, 
We're gonna go over the leather sole. Make sure everything's on. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> now you're good. <laughs> now you're good. All right. So everything looks lined up. Now we'll just leave it on here for just a little bit and let that adhesive cure properly and then we'll finally be able to get that screw back in there make sure to see how everything's sitting there all right we're good for a little bit so we'll see you back when it's time to put the screws and nail or the screw and the nails in all right everyone so this heel base is on all nice and tight so now we're going to go ahead and put the screw back in there as far as the nails, it's going to be a little bit difficult for me to be able to record that just because it's such a tight squeezed area. So I'm probably going to have to kind of do the nails off camera. But I'll at least put the screw back in. There we go. Nice and flush. So there's that screw in there. And so yeah, the nails, it's just going to be very hard for me to be able to do it on camera so i'm going to go ahead and do that off camera but in the meantime this leather piece i'm going to go ahead and by hand sand up that patent leather strips right on the inside here and then sand up this area here i don't want to do it on our machines because that might be just a little too much for this uh to for the thinner leather to handle all that so i'm going to go through that by hand sand it up a little bit and then put some glue in there while I'm running the nails in and everything and let that cure for a little bit so I'll go ahead and do that let you see what that looks like because once I've got everything glued up on the sole part I still have to fix up this section that's kind of missing right there and what we're going to do is just cut straight into it and then position a new piece in there so let me go ahead and get part part of that taken care of for now and I'll see you back in just a few all right everyone so we're back here again with these ones um, so, I'm just give you an update of what's going on. Um, so I did this off camera because I've done plenty of videos for the protective soles already. Um, we're going to go ahead and stick that on. We've got everything cut. Now we're going to take off the tape and put the Caselli mirror protective sole on there. And um, as far as on the back end here, we've got this section right here that I cut at a 90 degree angle. Right where that heel was all beat up and damaged and everything for that sole area. And I've got a little strip of uh, leather soling that's in the, uh, well, in the oven basically. It's getting heated up. The leather, it's better to heat up in the oven separately. That way it's a little more pliable and it helps activate the adhesive. For the protective soles, however, I learned my lesson a while ago. These Casellis do not go into an oven. They, uh, they melt. They look like some form of like gummy candy afterwards and so I like to put them on beforehand and then I take a heat gun and then I heat it up now the heat gun that I have over here by me has been kind of driving me nuts because it just keeps going as a cooling setting so I'm gonna put on this protective sole real quick and then we're gonna go ahead and put on this back section here that's missing off the sole and then I'll go ahead and take this to our other table and just just heat up the protective sole but for now i'm just going to hammer it on lightly okay that's just going to hold it long enough for me to be able to do this part of the sole now i cut this out of a sheet of soling material it's designed for soles i had to cut down the thickness a little bit it is still on the thicker side but I didn't want to make it just way too thin or anything like that because I can adjust the thickness a little bit later. But for now, ooh, that's kind of hot. I want to leave it like that. Yes, I know it's a long strip. That's just how I had to cut it. I had to cut it out of a, uh, a sheet, basically. And so I was like, well, there's no point in just making a small little chunk there because it's hard to pull it through the... Um, through the skyver basically but this all just gets pressed on by hand 
because we don't want to just hammer it. A lot of times what happens is cobblers will hammer it this way. The problem is that the, the, the heel block is plastic after all. And so what happens is with that heel block that it kind of gets deformed or may have minor cracks and we just ended up fixing up the heel block there a little bit. So we don't want to do that. Just good amount of pressure, make sure everything is lined up. There's plenty good on these. And so I'm just going to go ahead and cut off the the big piece sticking out here leave majority of it still behind let it cure let the protective sole cure and uh, then we're gonna be ready to move on the other one I've already got stuck together still gotta pop that uh, little top lift or the dowel pin heel out of here I didn't do that quite yet on that one because my bigger concern was this shoe right here I had to mess with that one for the longest but again I've done plenty of soles on the protective sole videos if you want to check those out uh, you definitely can I'll leave a link in the description for a couple of them uh, with the process for cutting and everything because we do after all have to cut it we can't just glue the protective sole over top one because it's not gonna stick because this is too smooth of a coating of the red paint that they put on the blue, blue batons the other thing is the fact that um, it's gonna make the sole just way too thick looking we have to take off a small portion to make sure that everything is lined up as flush as possible um, I mean just to give you an idea that right there is very flush there's a little bit of a glue residue left behind because I do like to glue the very edge Put this down grab this strip here I like to use a special primer here on this very edge here and then I'll put glue right there because it is a 90 degree angle cut after all that we're doing and I want everything to line up perfectly so there's going to be a little bit of glue that goes over top but that glue gets cleaned off very easily and uh, will get removed just fine. So let me go ahead and uh, get this one heated up, um, stuck together better and I'll let it sit, cool down and cure and we'll continue on so I'll see you back in just a minute. All right, everyone. So as I mentioned, um, I finished out the red bottom protective soles on these uh, just because, again, I've done a few videos already on that. So if you want to check that out, I'll leave a link in, a link in the description. But uh, in today's video, I really wanted to make sure I showed the uh, heel wrap there that we did. So we got that new heel wrap on on the inside. It's kind of hard to show, but replace that chunk of leather right there a little bit. Um, now, obviously, the shade of red, it, I don't know if the camera can catch it. It's kind of hard without having the toe block it all off. But uh, the shade of red is a little bit off. That is required by law. We did use uh, Angelus Walk-On Red, which is phenomenal stuff. But by law, it is required to be off on color just a little bit, basically. And same thing with the protective soles. So it seems like on camera, it always catches it. It's like a perfect shade of red. But in person, trust me, it's just a little bit off and not much. I mean, it's... Again, it's still a red sole and everything, so it's a lot better than what was shown before when you don't have this red bottom on there. Uh, it's all choppy and everything like that, but, you know, we got that taken care of. I showed a little bit how we trimmed up those ladies' dowel pin heels. Now, ladies, I know that uh, the Louis Vuittons, they come with their own heels, and that's fine. Um, we prefer not to use them. Problem with those Louboutin or any factory heels, they have a lot more plastic content in them. So what happens is when we're trying to hammer them on or press them on, they tend to crack and uh, we don't like that. It's just the type of mixture of uh, rubber to plastic ratio that they use. The ones that we use have just a slight bit more of uh, rubber in there. So they're able to withstand the uh, hammering and pressing on there. And, uh, you know, just save those Dalpin heels. If you send the shoes to us or if you bring them by, we will use our own preferably. If you're very adamant about using the original Dalpin heels, we will do it, but I advise against it. I recommend hanging on to those just in case if there's an emergency and there's a way that you can have that thrown on there really quickly by somebody who might be handy around you, um, whoever it may be. But uh, 
in those cases, I would hang on to those uh, Dalpin heels. But anyways, like I had mentioned, uh, where is the shoe? Ah, there it is. So there we go. We've got the new protective soles from Caselli. They're the mirror finish ones and the new heel wrap. So these are all ready to go and uh, look a lot better than what they used to. So hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, let us know. Um, or you can always check out our website, cobblersplus.com. I don't know if I'll have this service up quite yet on our website, but regardless, you can check out our website. Again, link is in the description uh, for other services. I know the red bottom protective sole options on there, the ladies dalp and heels is on there. Uh, so you can check over that. As far as the rewrapping, that's a very difficult thing to do because different styles of shoes and brands are very, very hard to be able to identify. So if you want this done, and if you're not local here in Colorado, I highly recommend that you email some pictures beforehand and we'll be happy to assist however we can on that otherwise again thank you for watching make sure you hit that thumbs up button because uh when you like our videos apparently youtube's algorithm helps our channel grow more uh, so if you enjoyed the video definitely make sure you hit that like button and uh share the video if you know anybody that uh, has come across that kind of issue or a puppy does dog does some chewing um we'll we'll be able to show you some things like that some animal damage might be a little more complex than this this one thankfully was not horrible i mean not easy but not horrible either but again if somebody has a puppy that has a tendency to chew their shoes be sure to share the video maybe it might help to save their favorite shoes otherwise don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell icon thank you for watching and we'll see you next time